Okay, now that we have a convenient form for the second law, or for changes of entropy in terms of other properties, we can start looking at what happens if entropy doesn't change. What we call the isentropic relations. So basically, these are processes where ds equals zero, so s2 minus s1 is zero. So this is an adiabatic reversible process. So that means that something like CP1, T2 over T1, minus R1, T2 over P1, is zero. So if I just write this so that there's one logarithm on either side of the equation, and then we exponentiate, We get that the ratio of pressures is equal to the ratio of temperatures to this exponent CP over R. But we can write CP over R another way. From one of our earlier equations, we have that that's gamma over gamma minus 1. So P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus 1. Now, we can also write equivalent expressions using other combinations of properties. So we could write V2 over E1 plus T2 over T1 to the minus 1 over gamma minus 1. And also, therefore, rho 2 over rho 1 plus T2 over T1. The one over gamma minus one. Um, so combining all these together, we can write that P two over P one is rho two over rho one to the gamma, and that's equal to T two over T one to the gamma over gamma minus one for any isentropic process. A perfect gas. So take a step back, where did this come from? This came from the first and second laws. So this is really an energy relationship for isentropic processes. Now these isentropic relations are incredibly useful because a large number of compressible flow problems are nearly isentropic. Basically the flow outside the boundary layers are isentropic. So this is useful relations that we use moving forward dealing with compressible flows.